Okay, so, so far in chapter 6, in 6.1, we looked at what's called the maximum likelihood estimate for uh, unknown parameter. And in section point two, we use the method of moments um, to estimate parameters in a PDF of a random variable. And um, what's a complicated question is how do we know which estimate is best? Um, and so that's, again, a complicated question, and there are various properties that we might use to gauge which estimate is better than the other. Um, one of them, this idea of whether our estimate is biased or not, we've, we've already taken a look at um, in a previous chapter. We'll also talk about what does it mean to say that one estimate is more efficient than the other, and we can also gauge um, the bias, in some sense, the error by using another measurement called the mean square error, which actually um, is going to combine this notion of how biased our estimate is with um, how variable is that estimate. Um, so let's first start with a property that we've seen already, which is this notion of bias. So we, we say an estimator is unbiased if, on average, um, the expected value of that estimator is equal to the actual value of theta. So in other words, um, we'd say that an estimate theta hat, um, if it's expected value minus the value, the actual value of theta is equal to zero. So we've seen this in the context of bootstrap distributions and how we could estimate the bias of an estimator using the bootstrap estimate for bias. Some other ways where we've seen this idea of bias, um, we've shown that if we want to estimate mu with x bar, the expected value of x bar is mu, so that makes it an unbiased estimator of the population mean. And if, say, we're dealing with a binomial distribution and we don't know what the value of p is, we've seen that if we use p hat, um, the sample proportion, that also is going to be an unbiased estimator for the population proportion p. Um, so on the next slide, we're going to take a look at an example of a pretty good estimate, which is actually does have some bias in that estimate. So um, finding an unbiased estimator, first of all, might not even be possible in some cases. And in other cases, we might prefer uh, a bias estimate over an unbiased estimate based on some of these other properties. Um, so let's take a look in the next example at an estimator, which is a good estimator, but has some bias. Okay, so um, back in section 6.1, um, there was a theorem where they went through um, the maximum likelihood estimate for a normal distribution, which has mean, mu, and variance sigma squared. And um, it might not be surprising that the maximum likelihood estimate for the variance looks kind of familiar. It almost looks like the definition of the variance. So it is 1 over n um, times the sum of xi minus x bar squared. Um, and so this is actually a biased estimate for, um, certainly for what I have over here, um, that should be a sigma squared over there. So that's a biased estimate for the variance of the population, and let's prove that. So um, a couple of facts that I want to just remind us about that'll be useful when we prove this. And first of all, if we're looking at the variance of x, well, the variance of x we can write as the expected value of x squared um, minus the expected value of mu squared which we more commonly just thought of as the expected value of x squared minus the mean mu of x squared. Okay, and so in other words, we can say that the expected value of x squared is equal to sigma x squared, the variance, plus mu x squared. So it's just like if I were to take this and add it to the other side. Um, and similarly, this is going to be useful when we want to prove this, that if I were to look at the expected value of x bar squared, then we can say that is the variance of x bar plus the mean of x bar squared. 
And just so a couple of points before we simplify this is that um, this variance of x bar, recall that when we found the standard error of the sampling distribution for x bar, let me just break this up here, we found that the standard error, which in some sense is the um, standard deviation of x bar, that was equal to the standard deviation of x over the square root of n. And so if I want to find out what is the variance of x bar, I can just square this over here. And another point that's worth mentioning reg regarding the center, um, that is if um, I look at the center of the sampling distribution for x bar, remember that's going to equal the population mean, mu of x. Okay, so this expected value of x bar squared, I can replace the sigma squared x bar with sigma squared x over n, and I can replace the mu x bar with mu x. And again, this is because um, mu x bar, the center of the sampling distribution for the mean, is equal to the population mean. And we would like to estimate the, or we would like to calculate the bias for this estimator sigma x, uh, sigma squared. And um, just recall that the bias is going to equal the expected value of the estimator minus the actual value of it. So we need to calculate the expected value of sigma hat squared and show that it's not equal to sigma squared. Um, we want to show its bias, so in other words, we want to show that that is not equal to zero. Okay, so we need to calculate the expected value of sigma hat squared. So we want to calculate the expected value of this expression up here, one over n times the sum um, of xi minus x bar squared. So um, the first thing we can do is pull out the one over n. We can pull out constants from inside the expected value. And what's left inside would be, for example, like x1 minus x bar squared plus x2 minus x bar squared all the way up to xn minus x bar quantity squared. So uh, expected values can be split up in sums. So in other words, I can calculate 1 over n times the sum as i goes from 1 to n of the expected value of xi minus x bar squared. Okay, and so that is exactly the variance of each xi. Um, so I can replace this using the property that we proved in red. I've got 1 over n, I've got the sum, and um, the expected value of x minus x bar, I can write as the expected value of xi squared minus the expected value of x bar squared, okay? Just using similar algebra as we use to prove the property for variance. Okay, so we've got one over n, and we're multiplying that by the sum of the expected value of um, each of the xi squareds. So those are going to be different depending on xi. And then we're going to subtract um, n times e to the x bar squared, since that's going to be the same and we're summing n different times. Okay, and we're multiplying 1 over n times that, that whole quantity. Okay, we're almost there. So we've got 1 over n, and um, now this e to the xi squared I can replace that with, um, so now I'm summing, for each of those, I can replace it with sigma x squared plus mu x squared, just rearranging the, the property of variance. Um, so those are going to be the same because we're picking each xi from the same distribution. 
And then we still have to subtract n times x bar squared. And now I'm going to use this result that we proved over here in blue to start that I can replace e to the x bar squared with sigma squared x over n plus um, mu x squared. So now I've got my 1 over n. And since each of these terms is going to be the same, where we have n times sigma x squared plus mu x squared. And if I distribute my n through, um, that leaves sigma x squared, and I've got a minus n times mu x squared. And so this n mu x squared they cancel. So I've got one over here with the n, and I've got this one over here. And um, so that leaves now the expected value of um, sigma squared. That's going to be um, one over n times um, if we and if we come back over here, what we can see is if I were what's left inside of here is I have n sigma x squareds minus 1 sigma x squared. So actually, that gives me n minus 1 sigma x squared. Okay, so this expected value of sigma hat squared, that's going to be 1 over n times our n minus 1 sigma x squareds. So my expected value of sigma hat squared, therefore, is n minus 1 over n times sigma x squared. And so in other words, I don't get sigma x squared back. So this is what tells me my estimate is biased, right? So if this was an unbiased estimator, the expected value of sigma hat squared should give me sigma x squared, um, the thing it's trying to estimate. But we're off a little bit. Um, so this is not a horrible estimate because what you can note here is as the sample size gets large, as n goes to infinity, this fraction in front of sigma heads to 1. So actually, as n heads to infinity, this estimator sigma hat squared actually becomes unbiased. So this is not an unbiased estimator. But in the limit, as n goes to infinity, it becomes unbiased. So we would say that this is asymptotically unbiased. But it is a biased estimate. And one more thing that's worth noting in this example is this n plus 1 that we found out here. Um, this is not unrelated to um, why when we calculate the standard deviation of a sample, um, we divide by n minus 1 instead of by n. So if that means anything to you. If you've ever wondered why the sample standard deviation is different than the population standard deviation, um, it has to do with this calculation here.